Hey, what's up, guys? So, up next, we're gonna do Tom McDonald, The System. Welcome to the world, baby boy. I'll paint you red and white and blue. The indoctrination starts as soon as you come out the womb. Pretty quick, we'll make you stupid with curriculums at school. And if the classroom doesn't do the trick, we'll make you watch the news. Pick your team, right or left. Pick the red pill or the blue. You can vote, but even if you win, still everyone will lose. Don't forget to buy designer because Gucci makes you cool. We prioritize material belongings over truth. Get a job that you can't stand so you can buy some cans of food. Go overseas and die for freedom. There's some oil we can use. Our democracy exists so that you think that you can choose. But our algorithms make you do what we want you to do what's the problem you're depressed society has you confused we got medication for you that you'll probably abuse go get married to a lady all right so i see where this is going y'all so this is basically you know another propaganda song right that's essentially what this is so what's interesting about this one though is that He's basically saying they want to indoctrinate people as young as possible, right? Uh, you know, because it's easier for you to believe things when you're younger. So, I, I think that's the direction he's going with this. Like, yeah, they want to get, uh, in order to make them believe all these conspiracy theories and all these ridiculous things, like, they want to get on... Uh, before they've even had a chance to to be a kid, you know what I'm saying? Like they're to me when they're doing stuff like this, they're stealing their youth away from them. They're not even letting them be children. Um, and I think it's despicable. You know, the whole idea of let's teach the kids about systemic racism like why you know like how about let's just let the kids be kids if they have that problem later on in life let them deal with that when that problem comes up if it ever does but let's not you know crush their their spirits and crush their dreams right off the bat you know what I'm saying? Like, and even still, if you're on that bandwagon of let's teach the kids about systemic racism, uh, that's not a solution. The solution to that, if you truly believe that that's a problem, take it up with the government. All right? You know, send letters to congressmen. Send them to whoever else. You know might be in a position to to listen to you all right but let's not take it out on the kids the kids got nothing to do with it don't steal their innocence away from them they're not the ones you know like I did a, a video about this before and I was like you know this isn't boss baby the babies aren't rising up to fight injustices <laughs> you know what I'm saying uh, this is not on... Don't put this on the children's shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Take it up with people who can actually do something about it. If there is a problem at all. Or whatever problem you actually see. Show congressmen the proof of it. Show them whatever you got. But don't, don't bring it into the school system. The school system needs to teach about history. They need to teach about math. Science. Uh, English, all, you know, all those types of things. Not about current real world problems. They don't, there's no reason for them to know about all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's just, alright, let's keep going. Also don't have a clue and pump on a few babies that are just the same as you. Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all. Here inside the system, violence is a symptom. Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong. Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all. Here inside the system, violence is a So was he talking about systemic races? Because that was my first thought when I saw the title. Maybe this is systemic racism he's talking about. I'm not thinking so. 
I'm thinking this is more of you know he's pull he's pointing fingers at people pushing the narrative of systemic racism. I think that's what's going on here. Symptom fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong. Welcome to the world, baby girl. I'll paint you pink if that's okay. We'll encourage self-destruction through the music that you play. We divided all the men by trying politics and race, and honestly, it's working awesome, so for you, we'll do the same. Never teaching you to love yourself, inject you full of hate, objected by your sexuality, then play. Oh, my God. This beat that's, that he's bringing in right here, y'all, I've never heard a Tom McDonald beat go like this. It's like eerie and creepy. And it's like, it's so fitting for what he's talking about, though. Like, this one's crazy, y'all. <laughs> Man, Tom's doing his thing on this one. Me for the raven, weaponize the differences that make our men and women great. Then just to screw with you, erase the genders. Everyone's the same. We'll empower you with rights to vote and fight for equal pay. Then have the men turn into women and you'll fight for them again. But you thought you had it figured out, but everything has changed. Welcome to the system. Please enjoy your stay. Here's a Bible and a bottle of the cheapest booze we make. Find a man who can take care of you to fill the holes we made. Buy a house and settle down, fulfill your duty, procreate, and make a couple babies who will also do the same. Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all. Here inside the system, violence is a symptom. Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong. Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all. Yeah, y'all already know by now, or at least you should. Um, I can't really, you know, I can catch some of what he's saying, but when it's, uh, you know, when he goes through, uh, you know, so many different topics really quick, it's hard for me to, to process everything that fast, alright? So, what we're going to do, we're just going to have to read the lyrics on this one, I think. I don't know though, it's not that fast, so maybe we could do a lyric video. Uh, I don't know yet, we'll see. Welcome to the world, everybody. I'ma paint you black and white. I'ma make you hate each other so that everyone will fight. I'ma give you all religion, let the righteous find the light. But I will also give you science to oppose the word of Christ. And I'ma give you borders, they're imaginary lines. If you cross them, go to war and win when everybody dies. And I'ma give you money that you'll value more than life. And let the 1% have everything while you fight to survive. And then I'll give you politics, I'll call it left and right. And while All right. So look. That right there, y'all. Um so far that one hit home that one hit hard for me you know let's give the one percent everything while everyone else is just fighting to survive is basically what he was saying there uh yeah you divide yourselves, I will conquer both the sides. Can't you see? I'm the system, my whole purpose is divide. What you choose will never matter because everything is mine. Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all. Here inside the system, violence is a symptom. Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong. Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all. Uh, hold on a minute here. All right. So, Tom McDonald's song, Fake Woke, he said in there, I think Black Lives Matter was the stupidest name when the system screwing everyone exactly the same. I disagreed with that completely. A lot of people disagreed with that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I watched a lot of reactions to it. And there was a lot of people that disagreed with it. And a lot of people that agreed with it. You know, it was kind of a mixed bag there. Some people agreed, some people didn't. But look, I think he just gave some clarification to that statement. I, I really think so. From going by this, right? I don't know if it applies. Maybe it does, maybe I don't. But going by this... I think what he's saying is 
the system is going to screw everybody in different ways but ultimately it's for the same purpose but it's in different ways you see what I'm saying so if it's uh, black and white they're gonna try and divide them so if it's class then it's okay you're one percent we care about you okay you're the bottom of the barrel we don't give a shit we want all your money to turn around and give it to the one percent so all the middle class is getting screwed all the white versus black they're all getting screwed everybody's getting screwed in different ways but all for the same purpose and that is division so it's for uh, chaos I, I think that's really what he's getting at if that's what he meant in fake woke then I agree with it but if he meant it as a racial statement uh, that there is no systemic racism there's no racism at all we all get treated the same whether we're what nationality we are what color we are I don't agree with that you know what I'm saying I, I really don't like a, a, a perfect example just to illustrate to you guys reason why I say that go ride around with cops in Beverly Hills then go ride around with them in trailer parks and ghettos all right you're gonna see very different types of cops very different you know what I'm saying um, what you're gonna see in the ghettos you're gonna see cops that are basically always gonna be on guard they're gonna treat everyone like they're about ready to, to shoot you know what I'm saying and it's understandable because of the crime rate is higher in certain areas all right anytime poverty goes up so does crime rates it goes hand in hand and the, the problem that a lot of people don't get is that just because you know in certain areas maybe most of the crime is committed by black people it's got nothing to do with the color of their skin it has to do with the climate of where they live um, that's what it has to do with you know you take those people that are out you know dealing drugs or you know shoplifting or doing whatever else they have to do to survive you take all those people right that are doing all those things and then you tell them you're gonna switch places and you're gonna go live in Beverly Hills and you're gonna have all the money you need to survive you won't have to do any of the crime that you were doing before how many of them do you think would still be out committing crimes that's the ultimate question people really need to start thinking about it's not because they're black or it's not because uh, of anything else uh, that's really what it's all about you know so the way I look at it is there's a few things that would cause someone to turn to a life of crime poverty is one uh, their heritage the way they grew up the things they've seen you know if you're constantly seeing you know drug dealers if you're constantly seeing crime if you're constantly being exposed to all that you get desensitized to it and it more than likely not always but more than likely it can change your perspective of how the world works and you're more likely to adapt to that as a lifestyle and say you know I don't like selling drugs to kids but that's the you know that's the life we live in this is the way it works you either do this or you have to tell your kids they don't get to eat today because you don't have any money all right so like if, if we're gonna talk about all these different issues why can't we be real about it and discuss why these issues happen you know what I'm saying? Instead of just people's 
spewing out a whole bunch of statistics that means absolutely nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's what it is. All right. Um, so, the question some of you guys might have about this is, does the system really hate poor people? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely it does. Now, here's the, here's the thing. Um, the people with money gets the power they get the right to say you know who they can take advantage of and the government does not give a crap okay uh, to give you an example of what I'm talking about here so if you're living in poverty like I am like most Americans are, you know, uh, and if your credit isn't good enough, right, you can't go and get a brand new car because they're going to check your credit and then they're going to say, you're not approved. So you can't do that. So what, so usually you're going to go to a, a buy here, pay here lot, place where they don't check your credit. Go in there, you give them several hundred dollars. You drive away with the car. Um, they give you a contract to sign. Do you read the contract? No, because you need a car. You have a job, and you have to get to your job, right? So it's not an option. It's not like you can say, I'm going to not get this car because I don't like what's in the contract. You know what I'm saying? You're going to sign that contract because it means you're getting a car. You're just hoping you're not getting a piece of crap. And a lot of times, what do you get? A piece of crap. And when it breaks down, you have to hope that the car lot is going to work with you and get it fixed for you at a price you can afford. Because if not, they get the car back because you signed the contract they're then eventually going to start garnishing your wages for a car you don't even have anymore and what they're going to do with that car they're going to fix it up just good enough so that the next person signs another contract drives away with it breaks down sends it back and now they've got another person they can garnish their wages from. Where's the system that's going to say, hey, wait a minute, you're making too much profit off of people who has no money, who's living in poverty. Um, just to give you an example, I was getting so many garnishments at one time they said okay you can't garnish any more money from him because he has to have enough to live on that's how many I had two different garnishments from student loans and from several different cars <laughs> um, you know if I was still working I would be getting garnished for the rest of my life the rest I would never ever be able to pay it off and keep in mind we're talking about cars I don't have anymore we're talking about an education I got nothing out of you know whatever happened to the value of something is based on what you get out of it whatever happened to that it doesn't exist that's what they'd like us to think, but if that's the way it was, then if you spent six months in college and dropped out, then the value 
of the education you got would be greatly diminished. All right? And, like, let's keep in mind, like, what if your instructors didn't do a very good job of explaining to you how, you know, how things work, right? And they just were going too fast and they didn't really give a crap. They're just spewing out a whole bunch of nonsense. Does anything happen to them? Do they get in trouble for that? No. Not one little bit. But you'll get in trouble if you don't pay for that education. It makes no sense at all. It really don't. The question of someone's student loans never, ever comes up. Well, what was the value of that education that you got? Right? Did it end up helping you achieve a career in whatever you were pursuing? No. It didn't help me one little bit. So why am I still having to pay twenty or thirty thousand dollars for six months of college that I got nothing out of? And yet you're still going to tell me the system cares about poor people? That it doesn't put a higher price of value on the top 1%? I don't buy it. You know what I'm saying? So if that was what he was getting at in Fake Woke, then I agree. But like I said, if that was a racial statement, then I don't agree. Um, and the reason why I'm going to say that is racial profiling. No matter how much, you know, people might want to say racial profiling isn't a real problem. It is. Okay. If the cops can profile what type of person I am based on the area that I'm driving in. And based on the way my car looks, um, I'm pretty sure racial profiling could go into effect also. I mean, really. And it, the cop also told me, you're driving in a high drug area. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. What's that got to do with me? Um, because my car was old and beat up, and apparently I was driving in a high drug area. That was why. They constantly pulled me over out there. Constantly. Every time I saw a cop in that area. While I was in that car. I got pulled over. Every single time. And I bet you. Every single time they were surprised. That I looked like me. And my feeling that then and still is now that if I looked a different way like the type of person they would usually profile, it would have been a much different scenario. Much different, you know. Uh, it's, it's really ridiculous, y'all. And I think it's something we need to start realizing you know what's going on just because you look a certain way act a certain way talk a certain way does not mean you're a criminal does it mean the cops should be automatically let's pull this guy over he's up to something or uh, a black guy's walking down the street at night he looks suspicious to me why well because he's black and he's walking down the street at nighttime like, did they ever think maybe because we still live in a free country and they're allowed to walk down the street just like every fucking everybody else? But no, they're not allowed to because they're sh they should be scared, I guess. I, it's ridiculous, y'all. It, it's so, you know, aggravating that they, they want to do that but then we're also going to blame it on them, right? Because you're acting a certain way. That's why the cops are always pulling y'all over. It's it's upsetting. It, it really is, y'all. All right. 
I will see y'all in the next video. Till then, I'm out.